the problem considered here is of uh, gate uh, 2006 and is of common data type with uh, 2 plus 2 marks and this problem is based on the amplitude modulation. First we'll uh, read out the problem here and then uh, see the solution to this problem. Uh, here uh, this is an amplitude modulation. Uh, we consider the following amplitude uh, modulated AM signal where FM is less than B. XM is given 10, 1 plus 0.5 sine 2 pi 5, 2 pi FMT cos 2 pi FCT. This is the wave uh, given. The first part of the problem is the average sideband power for the AM signal uh, given above is so we have to find out the average sideband power. This is four options are here and we have to see which is the right option. The second part is that AM signal gets added to a noise with power spectral density given in the figure below. The ratio of the average sideband power to mean noise power would be and uh, this is the uh, uh, power spectral density which is given and these are the four options and we have to find out uh, which is the best, best option for the signal to noise ratio for this problem. Okay, so uh, what we observe here is uh, we just uh, very briefly summarize uh, uh, what these two parts uh, of the problem say that uh, the first part of the problem here uh, is basically an AM modulated uh, wave and the expression for the AM modulated wave is given here. Okay, by comparing uh, this expression with the standard uh, AM modulated wave, uh, we can determine the parameters like the modulation index and the peak uh, carrier power. And uh, by knowing those parameters, we can determine the uh, average uh, sideband power for the same segment. And the second part, uh, what is uh, said here is that uh, so power spectral density of this shape is given and uh, one has to find out the ratio of the sideband power to the noise power, the single noise ratio and uh, we have to see which is the right option here out of these options. So this is the, uh, these are two basic problems and now we start the solution to these problems. Now uh, if we uh, consider here uh, the first part here says the AM signal is given, expression is X AM T that is 10 1 plus 0.5 sine 2 pi F M T cos 2 pi F C T. F C T corresponds to gives the frequency of the carrier, F M T is the frequency to modulating signal and if you compare with the standard uh, AM wave, uh, we can find the value here for mu and the uh, peak uh, carrier power. Here this would correspond to the mu that is the modulation index and this represents the carrier power, carrier voltage, carrier amplitude that is 10 volts and modulation index is 5. Now uh, we are considering here the conventional AM and the conventional AM has uh, three uh, basic components and these components are uh, these one is the carrier wave this is cos omega CT carrier wave being represented by E cos omega CT the upper side band represented by mu EC by 2 cos omega C plus omega MT and the lower side band is represented by mu EC by 2 cos omega C minus omega T. These are the three components and uh, we can determine uh, the carrier power PC as EC squared by 2. This will give me the PC, the carrier power because if you take the average of this uh, 
time average square cos square omega ct time average will be half so, and uh, e we take e square v square upon r so it will be e so it will be ec square over 2 this will be the carrier power you can notice here uh, the uh, this is voltage basically the voltage so there should be v square over r there should be a resistive, resistive part also here but these all these powers have been normalized taking a resistor value to be 1 without any loss of energy we can do it so that is why this ec square over 2 corresponds to the power now uh, we can determine the power in the sideband power in the sideband again you can see this will be mu square ec square over 4 and this will be average of this cos square omega c plus omega mt average time average will give me half so it will be mu square ec square over 8 this would be so uh, if you add up uh, the two side bands so it will be half of that so mu square ec square over 4 would be the power in the side bands now if we know the power in the side bands so we can find mu is known to us 0.5 whole squared into ec is 10 so 10 squared divided by 4 so this is the power in the side bands that means this is the power in both the side bands put together so 25 by 4 watts and this corresponds to option C now uh, we can see in the second part here second part of the problem is uh, on the uh, mean noise power is the area under the power spectral density curve and the expression for it mean, mean, pn equals to minus infinity to infinity sn f df this power spectral density and this is has been taken for frequencies negative frequencies to positive frequency from minus infinity to plus infinity if we integrate over only for positive frequencies 0 to infinity we are taken it twice this is twice of SNF DF okay now uh, we can uh, determine the noise power uh, you can see here uh, this is the spectral density uh, given here this corresponds to total uh, four triangles one two three and four triangles and having a height of n0 by 2 we can determine the area under these triangles to determine the noise power and then get the mean noise power the mean noise power would be uh, four those triangles half base b into height is n0 by 2 so this simplifies to n0 b so now we can find out the signal to noise ratio that is power in side bands to power in uh, mean noise power the ps over pn that is 25 by 4 already determined in first part and n0 b is a mean noise power so this is the signal to noise ratio here and this corresponds to option B here ok so it's uh, a so very so good problem reasonably good problem to solve uh, giving a uh, illustrative view of uh, maybe the noise and uh, as well as the amplitude modulation part in it thank you